What I'm about to tell you concerns a co-op board that was interviewing a prospective buyer for an apartment. They noticed on the application that the apartment was going to be occupied by the owner's son who was in his last year of college. So they invited the father who was going to be the actual purchaser to come to the interview. He came with his son and the father also brought his girlfriend. Now the father at the time was probably about 65, 67 years of old age and his girlfriend I guess she couldn't have been more than 26, maybe two or three years older than her son. And during the course of the interview, the interview committee asked the father, well, your son is graduating from college next year. What are your plans for the apartment? Is he moving out? He says, we're not sure yet, but if he does move out, I don't know, maybe I'll let my bimbo here live in the apartment. The uh, co-op board thanked the family for coming from the interview, and then afterwards, of course, they were incensed by the father and said, you know, we don't want this type of an owner in our building. And he was rejected without any reason but I guess he could figure it out. He sent a letter to the board and managing agent saying, if the seller ever sues you for turning me down for this apartment, I'm gonna do everything in my power to help him. About eight or nine months later, when the seller was actually able to sell the apartment, uh, he sold it for considerably less money than he would have gotten from the original buyer. In addition, since the apartment was empty, he was carrying the apartment, paying both his co-op loan and his maintenance. So he was out of pocket a good thirty forty thousand dollars after he closed he started a lawsuit against the building and the board of directors for wrongfully rejecting his original buyer the co-op board at that time notified its insurance carrier of the threat of litigation in fact they served them with some of his complaint and the insurance company dutifully rejected on the grounds of late notice saying you knew about this at least eight nine months ago there was a threat of litigation you should have told us the co-op was then left to defend that lawsuit on its own and fortunately under the business judgment rule, which I know all the readers of Habitat know about, uh, were able to prevail. Nevertheless, they were out of pocket for a considerable amount of money in terms of legal defense cost. They then turned to their insurance carrier and said, we want to be reimbursed and the insurance carrier said, no, we're sticking to our original position. And it was incumbent upon the board to then start a second lawsuit against that carrier the carrier was so entranced that the carrier, believe it or not, asked for a jury. Uh, the jury did not receive the carrier's position very well and the co-op again uh, prevailed. That's the good news. So they were able to recoup all the legal expenses they had from the first case. But under the law which then exists, and it's changing but slowly, they could not recoup the actual cost for, insuring, for suing their own insurance carrier. So it was a good victory but one that was not necessary had they simply notified their insurance carrier early on of a threatened litigation. And my partner is going to talk about the consequences of that. There are two or three lessons to be drawn from this story. The first one is your initial reflex should be call your attorney and pass the threat on to your attorney no matter how obscure or remote or bizarre it may seem and let your attorney assess the risk of whether or not to report it to the insurance company. The second lesson is in any with in the case of any doubt do report it to your insurance company and don't worry about the possibility of an increased premium because in our in our experience there very rarely results in increased premium just from reporting a threatened litigation. And the, uh, the cost of having to bear your own legal defense is much greater than any premium increase that you might face.